Well, greetings. So glad that you're watching the uh, video today. This is Pastor Roy Porter with Liberty Ministries Church International. My wife and I, Jeanette, we pastor uh, this church that we began uh, in 1991. And we're just so grateful that uh, you're watching the program today. The Lord bless you. I uh, hope these other programs that we've had on uh, the network has blessed you in some way. We want to look at the Word of God today. and <clears throat> The Bible says, Study thyself approved unto God, a workman that need him not to be ashamed, rightly dividing uh, the Word of Truth. And the Word is so powerful, it is so relevant to our lives. Every day, every day, in and out, doesn't matter what age you are, the Word of God uh, guides us, uh, instructs us in every part of our life. So we want to look at uh, Luke 17. Today, reading with verse 1, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto them through whom they come. It is better for him that a millstone was hanged about his neck, and he cast and he cast into the sea that then that he should offend one of these little ones. In other words, you know, if we're Christian, uh offenses are gonna come because of our walk with the Lord, because of our relationship with Jesus. And we know they're coming and, and the Lord tells us how to deal with them. And it's so important because this affects our walk with the Lord, it affects our faith being activating and working for us. It affects our prayer life because uh, if we've got strife and envy in our hearts, uh, the Bible said every evil work is there. So it's important that we deal with offenses correctly as the Lord instructed us to. Uh, verse 3 says, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And that, that doesn't mean that we scold him, that we are very unkind to him, that we're nasty to him. Everything that we do, uh, we do in a loving manner. And, you know, you can be sincere with someone and and they see your sincerity without even raising your voice. So it doesn't mean that we scream out and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, we don't, we don't do it that way. Uh, we just let them know if they're offended us and a lot of times we're offended the best thing to do is be quiet and just deal with it ourselves because sometimes people don't mean to offend us they just uh, not thinking about what they're saying or the way they're saying it and so we have to give them a pass but if somebody that we know is deliberately uh, trying to offend us of course we can go to them and we should and we should talk to them but we should as much as possible we should try to keep peace with people. Uh, it says in verse 4, and if, trespass, if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent. Now it says, saying, I repent. Uh, if he does it seven times in a day, you kind of doubt he's repenting. But if he comes back to you saying, I repent, uh, thou shalt forgive him. So we, we forgive people. Uh, seven times in a day it says another place the scripture says 490 times uh, 70 times 7 that's the way God forgave Israel uh, 70 years he forgave them for their transgressions uh, before he allowed them to be carried captive into Babylon uh, and they were there well he, he they 70 years they didn't keep the Sabbaths. And uh, they were in Babylon 70 years in captivity. And we know there's a 490 year period there concerning dealing with Israel. We, we won't go into that today. But anyway, we're supposed to have a forgiving spirit. That's what it's saying. We're not supposed to be uh, going around with a unforgiveness because if unforgiveness gets in our life it can turn into bitterness and a root of bitterness can defile many people and so we we need to walk in love and walk in forgiveness 
And the apostles said unto the Lord when he said this, increase our faith because they, they figured they needed more faith to do this. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Well, he's talking about using words and commands of faith here. And it's, it's talking about the tree being plucked up by the root. You know, a lot of times people don't deal with the root of the lack of faith in their life because it goes back to bitterness and unforgiveness and uh, it, it, faith just won't work when we're walking in that kind of spirit. And Matthew eleven twenty three 23 and 24, and uh, that chapter there is talking about faith. It's talking about the faith to move mountains and speaking to mountains and removing mountains of of sickness of uh, of uh, financial problems or whatever it is but then it goes on down to say if you have all against any go to them uh, and forgive them and so forgiveness is connected to this kind of mountain moving faith it's it's something that if we want to have the level of faith to walk in the level of faith you know, the just shall live by faith. Uh, Hebrews eleven six says, He that cometh to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If, if faith is going to work for us, we have to walk in love. We have to walk in forgiveness. And forgiveness is a gift. It's giving uh, someone something they don't deserve many times because sometimes if people don't repent and ask you to forgive them the best thing for you and the best thing for me is to forgive that person because i heard a preacher say one time if you uh don't forgive someone it's like taking poison yourself and watching the other person to see if they're going to die because the poison will kill you and believe me i know i've been there before and so for our, our faith to be activated for our faith to work for us we need to forgive and the apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord began to instruct them in faith there about uh, the size, if you had faith as the size of a, a mustard seed. And so this, this is connected. Uh, if when we command things obey us, we, we need to be walking in love and we need to be walking in, in forgiveness. Verse 7, now this is <clears throat> something that I meditated on for years and sought the Lord for years to understand. I I really didn't understand it, uh, these scriptures here, what the Lord was talking about, but he began to open these up to me. Uh, but, w but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle? Now he's telling us how we get faith and how we keep that uh, faith that we can speak to something and it would obey us. And uh, of course, you know, I, I've seen this happen. I've, I've seen the Lord do this in my life that I spoke to things and sometimes they moved instantly and sometimes it took a while but that mountain did move and God promises that 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 the mountain will leave will move but which of you having a servant plying or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field go and sit down to me in other words if you if you got a servant plying and working in a field and personally I don't have any servants <laughs> You might have some. But Jesus, Jesus is giving an illustration here of someone that had servants and they worked in the field for, for their master. And, you know, when they came in from plowing or feeding cattle, the master didn't tell him when he came in from the field, servant, go down, go sit down and eat. I'm going to serve you. That's not the way it worked. It, it, it's in reverse here. Uh, what he's saying right here but look he goes on to explain and will not rather say unto him this servant the master will say unto this servant make ready wherewith I may sup and, and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink 